I find it very important to be brave in the sense that you don't have to you don't have to hide away from the world if you have different views from everyone else. Maybe you will offend people. Maybe maybe you will lose friends. Maybe even your family will disagree with you. But in the end, you will find the right people. You will find the right friends. Hello and welcome to another episode of Philosophy Workout. Today I'm talking to Naomi Seibt, a young woman from Germany, talking about how it is to feel different, uh, to think different in a society that is drifting further and further into the ir irrational space. Uh, hello, Naomi. Hi. Um, so, yeah, my, I guess my name is Naomi Seibt and I'm 18 years old. And I started becoming politically active, I think, roughly around 2015. Um, it started with the migration crisis. I wasn't very politically active back then at all. Uh, but my mother was quite involved, um, or she got quite involved after some time uh, of um, watching um, the migration crisis, um, well, um, causing a lot of problems, especially in Germany. And she became very suspicious and um, started posting about it on Facebook. And um, uh, she became quite, uh, quite famous, I guess, on Facebook. And so I started uh, involving myself into the whole um, Uh, maybe conservative scene and uh, I started questioning my own political ideals, philosophical ideals and I found um, a lot of YouTubers and other influencers, um, even though I don't really like the term, but um, you know, people like Stefan Molyneux and uh, Jordan Peterson as well, Sagan of Akkad, um, those were um, inspirations for me and so I developed my own um perspective on many political things that i had never uh, even considered before um before politics became important in germany because uh in middle school i wasn't politically interested at all um i did not like the way it was taught at school and i still uh think it's quite boring the way that teachers deal with um politics um it's very superficial i think Yeah, that's all about me. <laughs> And when you talk about teachers, what kind of teachers did you have? Did you have teachers that you could actually learn something or were they just talking leftist propaganda? Uh, depends on the teacher, um, obviously. Uh, but in the realm of politics, I think I never had, I don't want to bash my teachers, but I think I never really had the kind of teacher that I could personally, um, who's values I could personally identify with um, and of course teachers are supposed to be unbiased as unbiased as possible uh, they are not allowed to tell you who they vote for for example um, but you can always sense some kind of uh, political um, narrative that they do want to push or maybe it's unintentional um because the mainstream narrative i guess is just um that's what's taught in the school books um and so there's not much to question there and i i never i never liked that i can't get behind a school book that doesn't allow you to question um the mainstream ideas um that are out there um i prefer to question everything and that wasn't possible um no I, i think i never really had interesting um or very profound lessons in philosophy and politics at school yeah yesterday i don't know if you have seen it there was a survey among germans if they feel comfortable talking in public about their political opinion and only 18 percent one eight percent so less than 20 percent feel comfortable with this and i would suggest those are probably all voters of the green party but i don't know so where do you take um the strength to talk in public because you now with this video talk in public but you also write publicly with your real name poetry about the political problems in germany honestly i don't know what else to do <laughs> 
um, I, I can't be quiet about this stuff because um, I would I would deny myself the opportunity to be myself. And that's extremely uncomfortable, uh, especially in middle school. I think I tried to be um, I try to appeal to the mainstream narrative because that's how you appeal to teachers. That's how you get good grades. Um, and then later, I, I realized that it was destroying me, uh, literally destroying me because um, I have a very hard time um, disguising myself as someone that I'm not. And so in high school, I started becoming very um, controversial, if you want, uh, confrontational as well, uh, even um, in front of teachers. And I started sharing my own opinion. And uh, at first, um, people were kind of shocked, maybe. And there were many uh, students as well who um, did not like what I had to say, or they thought it was unnecessary to talk about that kind of stuff in class, um, or even offensive. Um, but after a while, I realized the more I, um, the more I became myself, the more I could identify who my real friends were. And that's a very important lesson that I learned. Um, it was tough at times because I did lose some friends, but um, in the end, it was the right thing to do because um, I understood who really shared my morals and values and who didn't. Yeah. You mentioned Stefan Molyneux. You sometimes listen to his shows. So you have an impression of how it is in the United States or UK to talk about it, to talk about difficult subjects and to have a different opinion from the mainstream. Can you explain to those international listeners and viewers um, how it is even more difficult in Germany? Or maybe it isn't, but I, I would say so. That's a difficult topic because... Um... I find it quite hard to compare, to be honest, because um, I it's a very individual um, it's a very in individual um, experience for me because I I never shut shut up about my beliefs. Um, I, quite frankly, I don't care anymore. Um, and if there's someone um, I meet in public and they they somehow find out about me and my political affiliations. Um, they find out about my opinions on Facebook, for example, because we exchange Facebook names and they call me out on it and they ask, um, why do you have these very offensive views? Then I can talk about it. I, I can explain myself. I can explain why I have these values and I can explain why I don't think that they are um, evil, um, which is what most people seem to think. And if the person I'm talking to is still um, very critical of my perspective, critical is fine, we can discuss everything. Um, usually people are quite uncomfortable um, at first, and that's true. I don't know if that's so different in other countries. Um, I think it is the same in the USA and uh, the UK as well, that at first people are very uncomfortable when you confront them with stuff that, um, that the public deems offensive. Um, maybe what's different in Germany is that people don't openly talk about these kind of subjects. Um, they are not the first ones to talk about it. They don't approach the subject, only if it becomes relevant in some context. For example, if I introduce myself to someone and they find out about my views. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a very, um, it's a, those are very taboo subjects in Germany, but I, I can only talk about my own personal experience. Yeah. Currently, there's sometimes a doom and gloom attitude among people on the conservative side. They say like there is no hope anymore, although, of course, young people like you are a sign of hope. But where do you see hope? Is the light at the end of the tunnel for Western civilization and especially Germany? Um, generally, yes, I do have hope. Otherwise, I wouldn't continue uh, spreading the word, uh, sharing my opinions. Um, when it comes to Germany, I'm more skeptical. Um, I don't want to, 
I don't want to lose hope completely. I don't want to say the only thing you can do is move out forever and leave this country behind because that's a very depressing um, perspective. But um, especially seeing the election results now, um, I am very concerned um, for this country. I am very concerned. I don't know whether or not we will be able to turn the wheel around and um, start the, not a revolution, <laughs> but start um, start reforming everything that, well, very urgently needs to be changed. Um, but it is true that the mainstream narrative in Germany has been for a long time and still remains the um, the very leftist, almost, well, not almost, um, downright socialist uh, narrative. Yes, and I see that people are becoming more and more socialist because I think the reason is people are scared and socialism means security, it means protection because socialism is a very authoritarian narrative and uh, ideology and authoritarianism is allegedly, <laughs> um, it protects you from harm, from the <laughs> dangerous um, rich people who supposedly take away the money of the poor and who destroy the planet <laughs> via CO2 emissions, which I don't personally believe. Um, but yeah, that, that's the socialist, that's the socialist goal. The socialist goal is to, um, is to rule over people is to take away our freedoms and our rights and um by trying to appeal to us um by well by 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 um by causing panic yeah and the ironic thing is actually um that um the, it's the conservative party uh in germany it's the afd who is always blamed for being so um, panic evoking, I don't know, um, apparently we are populist and we want to, um, we want to, want to, we are fear mongering, uh, when it comes to migration, for example, we hate the refugees. We are scared of the refugees. We are scared of other races, which is not true. Um, yeah, but, uh, I think the real, the real, um, Fear mongers are on the other side, on the on the left, on the very authoritarian left. Uh, climate change is especially um, that's the new hype, and it's a horrible um, hype. It's it's terrorizing. It's very scary when somebody tells you that you are the reason why the world is ending. And I think that many people are genuinely very scared they are terrified of that happening and that's why they do not want to be affiliated with parties like the AFD. Yeah, for me it's already like 15 years ago since I left school, but you have the first-hand experience what indoctrination is going on currently and I think it's a very professional, very effective indoctrination that is going on. But still, as far as I know, you have some leftist friends that went to the same school like you, that went through the same indoctrination. Um, what concerns them? What do they think about you? And do you think we can still reach them with rational arguments and research? Um, I don't have many friends from school anymore, but I have met a lot of new friends who, um, who I believe are green voters um so they have very leftist views and a very um you know environmentally friendly views and uh, climate change especially uh they buy into that kind of stuff um well um <laughs> but i can i can talk to them i can discuss these topics with most of them at least um, I have experienced that some friends shy away from these topics a lot and they don't want to talk about these things at all with me anymore. Um, so we have to build our friendship on other um, shared views, which is very difficult, to be honest, um, for me. Um, 
but I'm trying it. <laughs> I'm trying to build relationships on things other than um, my core political and uh, philosophical views. Um, it's difficult for me because those are my core values, and I don't want to. I don't want to keep them out of a friendship. But I can see that sometimes discussing political topics caused more harm than good in our friendships if we took it too, too far. I will still approach um, the moral values because I think that we can agree on a lot of things. And then um, it becomes difficult when it comes to the political application of these values. Sometimes I, I uh, realize, I notice that actually we, we are very similar people. We have very similar views. But then when it comes to how we apply those views in reality, we take different paths. And the reason for that is usually propaganda from the other side. At least that's how I see it. And um, like I said, I understand that if you are scared of climate change, if you are scared of the world ending, then you will not want to um, vote for a party that is completely against investing all of the country's money into climate change or into fighting climate change. Um, and you perceive this party as very egotistic, ego egotistical and uh, very um, narcissistic even. Um, so I can understand where many of my friends are coming from. And so I, I tell them exactly that. I tell them, I understand where you're coming from. I understand your perspective. And I'm sorry that you are so scared and I'm sorry that it scares you when I say I don't want to, I don't believe in this stuff. Because if I don't believe in this stuff, then maybe the world is going to end. Um, and then I continue and I um, I try to share my, my factual arguments. I try to share um, legitimate sources. I try to share statistics even, uh, showing why I have these views. And uh, then usually people can people can trust me. And well, that that keeps our friendships going. And uh, I think I can reach people with my views if I try to be careful about it. And if I try to um, not denounce them for their views, because I don't want them to do the same thing with me. I want uh, our friendship to um, be grounded in uh, mutual respect. That's the most important thing, to be respectful of someone else's views, even if you don't share them at all. Yeah, makes sense to me. And if I remember correctly, there was also a situation in a friendship of yours where the other person said, please don't talk any more about this, uh, that now, since the facts scare me. Was this uh, do I recollect this correctly? Um, yes, um, that's a very difficult situation um, because, like I said, I understand the fear. And when it gets to the point where the fear is so intense that the person doesn't want to talk about it at all and doesn't want me to um, perpetuate even more fear, um, I had to take a step back in that friendship and for now that's okay and i will um i will continue to um maybe talk about what i'm doing in politics at the moment maybe share some updates on uh some uh something that i believe to be a, a success in politics in germany um but i won't i will try to um stay away stay out of the um the scary parts because internationally there are a lot of things that are very difficult to talk about um things that are happening in the deep state if you will um behind the scenes um i don't want to get into the, these topics too deeply right now but um those things are very scary even more scary than climate change even more scary than the migration crisis and um yeah i have learned from that friendship that i need to start with 
um, I need to be more sensitive sometimes um, and understand that other people are sensitive as well. Um, I need to be more careful when I when I approach them uh, with these very um, very deep topics and topics that are very difficult to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, and, and to a degree, I can understand it. You are 18 years old. You're maybe a little bit more mature for your age than your peers, and they are only 18 years or 17 years old. And um, you want to trust the government. And maybe as it's a prerogative, if you are a child, you shouldn't have to worry about um, what is the government doing? Can I trust the chancellor? Can I trust the global uh, United United Nations system and the global uh, structure of power? Can I really trust them or are they man malevolent or just interested in egoistical ideas? And I can understand um, when somebody is scared and doesn't want to talk more about it because as a child, you shouldn't have to worry about those things. Yeah, that's very true. And uh, I have noticed that many people underestimate history. Um, they always keep telling us, um, never forget history, never forget the Holocaust. But really, <laughs> that can't be all that must not be forgotten. There's more. There's more to the story. There's socialism. And um, I think many people have forgotten about socialism, especially the younger generations. And um, not just socialism, just authoritarianism in general. Um, the Nazis were not, well, the people in Germany at the time, they were not all evil people. They were people who believed in the government. And that was the crucial mistake. The ideology, of course, was awful. Racism is awful. But the ideology, I think, is not the core trigger um, is not the reason why people were be behind those views. It's it's the propaganda. It's not that everyone was racist. It's not that everyone was evil. It's the fact that the government was so adamant about spreading those views that everyone just got behind them without questioning them at all. And it's the same with socialism that came afterwards. And so I think when people say never forget history, they have to question the same sentence that they are spewing themselves. They have to realize that never forget history means never forget that the government can be incredibly dangerous the larger it gets. Even in today's society, even in the 21st century, we are not done with, um, with corrupt governments. We are not. The government is still very susceptible to um, corrupting because power corrupts. It's true. It's always been true and it will stay true forever. Yeah. And uh, since you're talking about history, how does it feel to live under Angela Merkel's rule almost since you're born? Isn't it, isn't it a little bit strange or for, probably for you, it's always has always been normal, right? The, there is the chancellor and the name is Merkel. As a child, I had no idea about politics at okay. all. I remember <laughs> when she was elected, um, I was the kind of child who said, I want the woman to be elected. I didn't question anything, obviously. I was too young. And then, like I said, in, even in middle school, I still um, knew very little about politics because it didn't interest me at all. I always found it very boring. Uh, until I understood how important it was to my uh, core values that everything about politics is rooted in, um, yeah, my first principles. Um, that's what politics is all about. And when I realized that, I became very involved, uh, like I said. But um, before that, I just saw Merkel as... Um, a nice woman who's leading the country. She even studied physics, so she must be a very intelligent woman. She must know what she's doing. Yeah. Yeah, just as a so side note, she was elected, I think, in 2006. So she's ruling Germany since over 13 years so far. 
And um, I sometimes think if there would have been another person after Merkel, if Merkel would have stepped down after eight years or like just four years, we would have a completely different Germany, a completely different Europe. And that this um, means I believe in single persons changing the fate of entire people in the future. So um, yeah, it's interesting but it also of course empowers people like you since you can make a difference if angela merkel can make such a big difference maybe not in the positive way we hoped uh, yeah everybody can do it or many people can do it i do believe that however in the case of merkel i think she had and still has many helping hands in the background um many people who are who are pushing the narrative and she is she is an idol she is the symbol of uh of her of her narrative um but she's just the political figure um and we don't see a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes i believe personally yeah because those people um the people who are really pulling the strings they need to be um they need to operate in the shadows so they can't be harmed if everything goes down in the end hmm. yeah i think there we have like a slight disagreement because i sometimes think that there might not be as much behind the people that we see and that they are just simply living in a bum bubble being incompetent having uh, unrealistic uh, dreams about what they can achieve in the future and then everything goes wrong from there. But um, I'm okay with disagreeing on that point. <laughs> um, yeah, we have a few more questions. If you have time, let's... Uh, yeah, let's continue. Yeah. What are you actually studying right now? Do you study politics? No. <laughs> And I don't think that a political career is the right thing for me um, because I want to stay as independent as possible. I started studying uh, economics um, last year, but I did not enjoy it at all. Um, it's not that economics doesn't interest me. That's not the case at all. I love um, talking, reading about economics. Um, I do find it very interesting. Uh, the problem was actually going to university. It was being with the, with the other students um, It was the professors, it was the fact that everything was so um, obsolete, almost um, very old fashioned um, because, um, well, university and schools are a state run business. So um, everything stayed the same for hundreds of years and It's always the same. It's very boring for me. I had nothing to question. Um, the syllabus was very dull. Um, so what I'm doing right now is uh, I I realized that I needed to um, change everything basically <laughs> about my approach um, to studying. So now I am studying psychology in a distance learning setting so I can study from home and I only have to travel to a different city sometimes to write an exam and everything else I can do from home and online basically which is awesome uh, I'm very flexible that way it is expensive but for me personally it's worth it hmm. now again with a more biographical question When I was going to school, I still trusted my teachers. Maybe they weren't as much leftist back then. Uh, was there a time when you trusted teachers and then from one year or one moment to another, you recognized, wait a minute, I have to really question yeah. what they're saying. And maybe why are they saying something entirely different than, for example, my family? Yes, I put teachers on a very high pedestal because I always wanted to get the best grades possible. And... Um, I was very scared of what teachers would say if I ever questioned their views. Um, I never wanted to offend a teacher. Um, and then in high school, I realized they are just people. They're just like, they're not that much more special than anyone else. In fact, they are not any more special than anyone else. They are people doing their job and 
they believe that they are doing the best job that they can and i personally can disagree with their views and i can personally um attack their views maybe not attack them but confront their views and i can um talk to them as people and not just as these um authority figures that i had always been looking up to um i can talk to them um on the same level yeah and that was a very important realization for me because uh from that point onwards i was finally able to become to be more myself and to um really develop very firm moral values and um, establish very firm views because before that i was always on the fence i was always struggling to understand what i wanted to believe and do i want to believe um what i believe to be true or do i want to believe what the teacher is telling me yeah yeah that's that's an interesting observation so i want to thank you for this interview if you have any last words um and of course tell the viewers where they can find more of your work so uh right now i am uh i'm i'm planning to do more on youtube so hopefully there will be uh more videos on my channel uh in the near future right now Uh, I'm also on Facebook and maybe I will start, I don't know, an Instagram, Twitter account in the future, but I don't have any of these right now. So mostly it's uh, Facebook and hopefully um, YouTube, like I said. Um, apart from that, any last words? Well, I find it very important to be brave um, in the sense that you don't have to You don't have to hide away from the world if you have different views from everyone else. Maybe you will offend people. Maybe maybe you will lose friends. Maybe even your family will disagree with you. But in the end, you will find the right people. You will find the right friends. You will be supported only if you don't shy away and if you are truly honest about what you believe in. So always try to be yourself stay true to your own beliefs and you can't really do much wrong if you have the facts because obviously you only believe um what you think is true if you have the facts and so if you have the facts don't don't be scared that you can't that you can't engage in an argument with someone else you can thank you for those words I will put the link to your YouTube channel down below and uh, to all viewers, if you like this content, subscribe for more philosophical videos. See you. Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> <laughs>